Welcome to the Word in Power Global Broadcast with Bishop E. M. Jackson, Senior Pastor of Inner City Tabernacle of Life Ministries. Thank you for joining this ministry presentation of teaching and preaching from the Word of God. Connect with Bishop Jackson all across social media platforms or email at ictabernacle at gmail.com. Now let's get ready for a service already in progress. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 7 through 10. And the Bible says that, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Hallelujah. Kind Father, we want to say thank you. There is no God like you. Thank you for your grace and for your mercies that are renewed day by day. Thank you, Father, for life and for health and for strength, God. Father, we ask you right now, that you would hide us behind the cross and sanctify us by your truth. Father, grant us the utterance this day to declare this your word boldly unto this your people. We thank you right now, Father, knowing, God, that all things are in the power of your hand. And, God, you've got plans for us, O oh God. Father, God, for us to prosper, for us to do good, Lord. We thank you right now, Master. We pray, Lord God, that when we have concluded delivering what you've given unto us to give to your people, that your people would have been edified. And, Father, you would have been glorified and the devil would be horrified. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your blood. And we thank you for faith in this hour, God, for you doing great, wondrous, and mighty things. And, Father, we be so careful to give you all glory, to give you all honor, and to give you all praise. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen and amen. I'm going to talk a little while on this treasure. Hallelujah. We are uniquely gifted, each and every one of us in the house upon today, and those listening to us, wherever you may hear this at, I want you to understand that you are uniquely gifted. Hallelujah. Amen. God has dropped in us in the abundance, amen, of the operation of the gift that he has in each and our, every one of our lives. Hallelujah. There are certain skills that you have that I do not possess. Hallelujah. Certain skills that I possess that you do not possess. This is where our difference makes us united and makes us as one because God has put things out or get things out through each and every one of us. But what will happen if we all come together and use the gifts that God has placed in each and every one of us? Hallelujah. We have been hearing for over years and years uh, that everything that we need is already on the inside of us. Hallelujah. He has put it already in us. The giftings. Hallelujah. What they need happen is that they need to be developed. Hallelujah. Amen. It needs to be exercised or it needs to be matured, if you will. Hallelujah. It needs a growth to happen, uh, to grow up from what it, when you hardly could tell what it was, to now you know how to operate that that God has placed in your life and understand 
that is not you, but it is him working through you. Hallelujah. We have to know, amen, that God has blessed us in certain unique way. And in that unique way, it is a gift that he has given unto us that we may give out to the earth and that will glorify and magnify his name. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Because, because folk are, are utilizing the gifts that God has placed in their lives for their own selves. And, and, and they get themselves in a worldly pickle. And they get themselves in different kinds of conditions that, that, that they should not be in. But if we use the gift that God has placed in us to glorify God. Hallelujah. And watch him multiply that and watch him increase. That is what on the inside. It blesses the earth. It blesses those around us. Hallelujah. And we are blessed thereby from the giftings that God has placed in our lives. Hallelujah. We are all unique. Hallelujah. We all, we, we all understand uh, 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 that here in the building today, amen, that what we have, we didn't have it of ourselves. What we have, it was given to us by God. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, therefore, if I, if, I, if I want to, if I see it in my life, I want to become a doctor or a lawyer. I want to become an architect. I want to become, you know, a mathematician or I want to become a, an engineer. If I see that going forth and that hunger in my life, I realize that God has placed that in me. So now I go for higher education, if you will. Uh, amen. To learn how to utilize that that God has gifted me with. Hallelujah. When I was a young man, I really I had dreams or visions, if you will, amen, about what, uh, what I saw myself doing, amen, hallelujah, uh, being in an office, amen, exercising, uh, amen, these giftings and, and utilizing that. I, 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 I didn't have any inclination of what type of, 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 of experience I would need or what type of, of business I would go into. But lo and behold, God has got me doing that right now in an office situation, amen doing what I do. Hallelujah. And, and, and not only that, amen, but blessing others with the giftings he has placed in my life. Hallelujah. And been doing that well, amen. That's what they say. Amen. For a long period of time. And, not, and I'm learning something new every day. Hallelujah. I, I, I want to understand better about what I'm doing. I want to get more understanding, more knowledge about what I'm doing. I have not got to the point where I say, oh, I, I, got, I, I, I know all this. No. Uh-uh. Uh -uh. I'm still hungering for more understanding and, 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 and to get brought up understanding of what God has gifted me in. Amen. Therefore, thereby blessing others. Amen. With that, amen, that God has blessed us in. Hallelujah. And this thing basically, you know, it is, it is almost like a treasure. Hallelujah. That God has placed in each and every one of our lives. Hallelujah. It is that that is precious unto us. It is that that is special unto us. Hallelujah. You got to understand it, man. Everybody may not appreciate what you appreciate. Hallelujah. But you got to understand what God given to you, amen. You got to appreciate what God has given to you. Hallelujah. It, it's just like some of this art that's around here. Some of, the, some of this art, I don't understand why they even call it art. <laughs> Hallelujah, amen. But somebody else understand why they call it art, and somebody else appreciate that. Uh, you won't catch me paying a million dollars for a piece of art. <laughs> somebody that appreciates that, they will pay that, and they got that money, they'll pay that kind of money for that. Hallelujah. But that, 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 that's not me. Amen. That's not my gifting. That's not what God has placed me here, amen, to do. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But somebody calls this art, they call that art, so much so that they're willing, amen, to invest in that that they're seeing right before their eyes. And God has put something inside of us, amen, that he has invested in us that, amen, has a potential, amen, to grow greater and greater and greater and bigger and and bigger hallelujah amen 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 let's go amen unto the word of on today we have already started preaching whether you know it or not hallelujah 
Amen. We are in the book of 2 Corinthians of on today. Thank God, amen, for the series we just came out of, amen, on the pathway to wholeness, amen, uh, on, on, on getting our mind right, getting our mind settled, getting our mind focused on, uh, and all like that. If you miss it, amen, it's on our YouTube channel, amen, I believe. It's on our church website. Amen. You can go back and listen to those messages. Amen. And I pray that they be a blessing unto you. But today, amen, God has got us teaching or instructing on this treasure. And we are in 2 Corinthians. This is the second letter that Paul has written to the Corinthian church. You know, if we hadn't been there in a moment, I got to give you a little bit more history and background. Amen. So you'll be under, able to understand hallelujah, what is going on in this scripture. And I say that and I do that because they say knowledge is power. You know, I, I do that because we, I, I understand. I, I met a man in the, uh, uh, in the coffee shop one time. Hallelujah. And he saw my hat on my head about Jesus is Lord. I saw my baseball cap on I was wearing. And so he come to challenge me and begin to talk about the Apostle Paul. And I had to give him understanding about what, who the Apostle Paul was and about how he wrote all those letters in the New Testament. And about how he was a, 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 a half this and half that and, and where he was at. He was like, he said, oh, you really know about this. I'm saying, yeah, because I understand. I, I hung up to understand more about God's word and about the conditions in which it was written and so here we are here in second corinthians and, and we're talking about the apostle paul a letter he wrote to the corinthian church this was the second time amen that he wrote this letter unto them and he wrote this letter with a certain type of enthusiasm if you go back and read 2 Corinthians, you begin to feel something that when you're reading it uh, and reading the heart of Paul and reading uh, how he was helping the Corinthian church and how he was guiding them in the right direction. Uh, hallelujah. And how he was giving them what they needed. Uh, amen. Because he began to help them understand about the sufferings that he had went through. Everybody, you know, uh, 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 think that people don't understand about suffering, but Paul understands about suffering uh, and about what he went through and about how he endured, uh, amen, the wrong, amen, because uh, of what he was doing, the right. Hallelujah. How many know sometimes you do the right thing uh, and folks take it the wrong kind of way? Hallelujah. And so here Paul was over there witnessing and talking about Jesus and everybody did not want to hear about Jesus. Hallelujah. It's so much so that they got so angry that they put him in jail not more, more than one time. Hear me what I say. But he still had something on the inside of him that kept him determined to get that word out to those, amen, that needed to hear about the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Uh, again, this was the second of two letters that was written to the Corinthian church here. And here, while Paul was there of a natural sense, even though he was a preacher, he was a teacher, even though uh, 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 he was, the Lord was using him to heal the sick, the Lord was using him to share word, the Lord was using him to encourage the folks, he still had to have a, or well, he still had a natural job. And so here he is working with Aquila and Priscilla as tent makers over here in Corinth. So whatever Paul was doing, he still had a, we say a nine to five, but I don't think it was nine to five back then. Hallelujah. Amen. But he still had a job in which he had, uh, and he worked with Priscilla and Aquila, you know, uh, the tent makers. And there he also was preaching in the synagogue. Hallelujah. I saw a, uh, I don't know if it was a movie or it was a instruction uh, something I saw found on one of my uh, TV channels uh, about Christian uh, 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 teaching and you know, all like that, and they showed the man that how he was in the the area of the uh, of the synagogue and how they were given a, a, a poetic license, if you will, to go in and share their thoughts. Hallelujah! And it shows them standing outside uh, of the synagogue, sharing uh, uh, what they thought was God and sharing uh, their innermost thoughts. And then you have those uh, that were talking about Jesus and how that He rose from the dead, how He was resurrected, and talking about that. And some gravitated to hear what was going on, and some said, "We don't want to hear about this Jesus." But those that heard about this Jesus and their hearts were pricked 
all of a sudden they begin uh, to become believers of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, and by them preaching and teaching this it caused some kind of ruckus because now uh, they had an understanding about who God really is hallelujah uh, and, and the attention was going away from the Pharisees and the Sadducees uh, and they got mad about these things but yet still they had poetic license to go and teach and preach because all the philosophies were out there saying what their philosophy meant could you imagine going downtown Odessa, or downtown Middleton, or downtown Kermit, all of a sudden down in the downtown area, you see on this corner somebody preaching the gospel, on that corner somebody talking about Socrates, or on the other corner somebody talking about Plato, on the other corner somebody talking about another kind of religion, uh, and, and, and they're just teaching and preaching what they understood uh, as what they received. Uh, but all of a sudden, here comes the evidence coming uh, through the teaching and the preaching uh, of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And it affects in a way that none other uh, perspective or none other religion can affect a situation. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 It got so much so that Paul was doing all this awesome teaching. Uh, is that even Silas and Timothy came from Macedonia to join him on his evangelistic cruise over there. A uh, 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 revival, if you will, over there. Over there in the city of Corinth. Hallelujah. For some, it was difficult to understand in certain sections of this letter that was being written because uh, uh, for some, they say Paul wasn't being that particularly clear about what he was saying. Uh, but I, I, I beg the difference. If you have spiritual concept or spiritual understanding, uh, then God will enlighten us, amen, to understand even more about what's on those pages that we read. Uh, and a good thing about that is that we read those pages pages hallelujah but even though some folks could understand certain things about it it did not affect the basic truths that Paul was writing about the Bible says this in 2nd Corinthians chapter 3 mm? it says clearly I'm reading out the NLT it says clearly you are a letter from Christ showing the result of our ministry among you this letter is written not with pen and ink, but with the spirit of the living God. It is carved not on tables of stone, but on human hearts. We are confident of this because of our great trust in God through Christ. People didn't understand it. He's talking about that letter being written on the inside. It being written on our heart. The word being written on us. Hallelujah. In the heart of mankind, those that received the Lord. Uh, talking about the gospel, how it was received and how it was engrafted or engraved in the heart. Hallelujah. How many know that one, you get something in your heart, it, it, it's hard to get it out. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Hallelujah. Amen. This five says that it is not that we think we are qualified to do anything on our own. Our qualification comes from God. Verse 6 says this, he has enabled us to be ministers of the, new, of the new covenant. Look at that. Paul's saying we ministers of the new covenant. This is a covenant not of written laws, but of the spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The old written covenant ends in death. Hallelujah. Uh, 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 the, the, it, it, the letter kills. Uh, the, the, the old written covenant ends in death. But under the new covenant, the spirit gives life. Hallelujah. Under the rules and regulations and the things that, that Moses had written up that they put together for the people. Uh, they understand that if they transgress the law, then they were put to death. Hallelujah. But under the grace and mercy, the Lord gives us an opportunity or a chance to repent of our sins. Hallelujah. So that we can, amen, come to understand him better or love him more or get our life together like he desires for our life to be uh, that would glorify and honor him. In the OT, if you didn't glorify and honor God, boom, it was done. But in the New Testament, God gives us an opportunity to repent of the evil we have done uh, and get back on that glory trail, on that straight road, if you will, uh, and go forward in the name of the law. Because why? Because this law here is, is written in our hearts. 
Hallelujah. And Paul was sharing this, amen, with that body of Christ and with that Corinthian church about the things that he had went through. Now. And they, they were talking about his qualifications. He said, look here, I, 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 I don't have no degrees. I, I, I don't have this, that, and the other. But what I do have, I, I have it written on the inside of me. What I do have, I, I have it from God. What I do have, and what I do have, it changed your life. What I do have, it gave you a whole new look outlook on life. And now your life is better because of what the Lord spoke through me. And you received it. And now your life is now different. Hallelujah. Come up on this letter right here just for your historical purposes here. Amen. Chapter 1 talks about the ministry of comfort and suffering. All the things that Paul had went through. Uh, 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 the beatings and the whippings. Uh, 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 that talked about and uh, imprisonments. All those things. He's finding comfort in that. Uh, because uh, uh, they, they put me in there because of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. They put me in there because I said the right thing. I ain't saying if you say the wrong thing. He said, they put me in there because of what I was talking about. It was having an effect upon those that were around me. And it was for the betterment of themselves and the betterment of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Paul begins to let them know in verses 1 and chapters 1 and 2, if you will. Hallelujah. He said, look here, I was trying to get back to you, Corinthians. I was trying to get there, but I, I came so hardcore on the first letter. <laughs> he said, I came so hardcore on you because y'all was really out of whack. And so he came and he wrote to them and said, look here, you, 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 the young folks was, was over there with, with, with their mama doing stuff with their mamas and stuff like that. You know, uh, uh, the, the, the church was going crazy. Uh, they, they, were, they was drinking and putting sp folks out. Folks couldn't have communion right. You know, he, he had to address that and get a hold to that stuff. He had to talk to them about what real love is. Hallelujah. He said, faith, hope, and charity. And the greatest of these is charity, which is love. He said, they didn't, y'all didn't, I had to put y'all back in order. He said, in order for me to not come back and rebuke you again, he said, I'm going to go to another place and sing you this letter right here. Uh -huh. It's all in chapter number two. Hallelujah. Uh, and then as I talked to you earlier about here, chapter number three talks about his credentials. He said, look here, uh, I, I, I didn't get this from seminary. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I got this from God hallelujah what I got and what I delivered unto you broke the yoke off your life it broke the chain off your life hallelujah what I got you know it, it, it did something great for you uh, but I got this from God it didn't come from man it came from God hallelujah he began to show them how the Old and the New Testaments, uh, how they contrast one another. In, in, in other words, uh, it began to show them that this how they did it in the Old Testament, this how they do the New Testament. Basically, it's almost the same kind of thing. Uh, it's just a correlation or revelation uh, or a, a greater exposure to that that is done uh, so you can get the understanding from what God had been saying and what he is delivering even at this time. Hallelujah. Chapter 4 talks about the obligation to preach a clear gospel. And that's where we find ourselves in chapter number 4. Hallelujah. Under the obligation to preach a clear gospel. Hallelujah. 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 The Bible says this in verse number 7. It says, but we have this treasure. In earthen vessels. That the excellency of the power. May be of God. And not of us. That what we received. And that that you are receiving from us. The greatness of God. The goodness of God. The power of God. That you are seeing coming and you're receiving. Coming out of our mouths. See, it's not of us. But it is of God. Hallelujah. NLT says it this way. It says we have this light shining in our hearts. But we ourselves are like fragile jar, clay jars containing this great treasure. This makes it clear that our great power is from God and not ourselves. Can I talk to you about four things before we, before we get ready to close up? I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the treasure. Hallelujah. 
about the jars of clay and about the power of God and about the perseverance of faith. The first thing we'll talk about is the treasure. Hallelujah. Paul refers to the gospel message as treasure. He said we have this treasure in earthen vessels. This treasure, it is the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have the good news that people do not have to live life the same way that they have lived that will end up in a devil's hell. Hallelujah. We have a gospel, a good news to let you know that you don't have to die and go to hell. Hallelujah. We have a good news. Hallelujah. To let you understand and know that Jesus Christ died for your sins. Hallelujah. He died on Calvary's hill on that cross. But he didn't stay there. Hallelujah. When they put that body down and put him in the sepulchre and put him uh, uh, in that borrowed tomb as we say. And they put that stone and closed him in there as they thought that would be his final resting place. He did not stay there. We want to help you to understand uh, that he resurrected, that he rose from the dead. Hallelujah. Why? Because he was our sacrifice for us, our sacrificial lamb. His blood cleanses us. His blood was there to be offered for us that we would not go to hell. We just got to receive him as our Lord and as our Savior. He has got the power over death, hell, and the grave. Because he did not stay there, but he rose from the dead. Hallelujah. And he showed himself strong over there 40 days and 40 nights. Begin up there. Then after he did that, then he was ascended up unto heaven. And the record tells us that angels were standing over there saying, what you looking up for? That same Jesus. Hallelujah. It's coming back in like manner. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, I want to let you, you won't got to stay in the same state or the same condition that you were in. Uh, you can have abundant life. Hallelujah. You can have a life beyond the dreadful life that you are living. Uh, you can have abundant life. All you've got to do is receive him as your Lord and as your Savior. Hallelujah. Ah, but I, because we have a treasure and everybody in here is a, a minister of the gospel. Uh, the treasure in us is the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is precious. Hallelujah. We have a treasure because that treasure is so precious. We want others to know. Uh, hallelujah. But you got to get your own treasure now. Hold on now. Hallelujah. This is personal unto me. This is precious unto me. I'll let you know how I got mine. Now, you got to confess it for yourself and you got to get yours, baby. Hallelujah. The treasure that we have in these earthen vessels. The jars of clay. It is so interesting that Paul writes about a particular uh, a, a, a treasure that God has placed in us. But he's placed that treasure in jars of clay. If you look at the jars of clay, they are not perfect. Hallelujah. They are vessels that can be broken at any time. God understands and know, amen, that sometimes we may go to the left or we may go to the right. Uh, 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 understand that sometimes we make the wrong choice or the wrong decision. You understand that because we are jars of clay. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, we're fragile. Life is fragile. We are fragile. Hallelujah. Uh, 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 some things break folks earlier than other things break folks some things come in people's lives uh, uh, and it breaks them out uh, uh, but God understands he can pick up the broken pieces man can't put it back together but can I tell you one thing God can put it back together hallelujah if you read your bible in Ezekiel as he called from the four winds of the earth and he calls those bones back together God can put it back he knows how to search for everything that is broken, everything that is twisted, everything that is dusted away. He knows how to put it all back together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jaws of clay that we are. We are a mess. 
Hallelujah. But my Jesus, he can put us all back together. Hallelujah. We serve a God that can put us all back together. He knows we're weak and he knows that we're vulnerable. Hallelujah. Oh, but if we look under Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, if we look unto Jesus, because God, we are imperfect. Hallelujah. But our strength is made perfect. Hallelujah. I said our strength is made perfect. We might be weak, but our strength is made perfect. And only he can make us perfect. He can perfect us. He can, in other words, he can mature us. He can grow us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. If you look at a vessel that somehow, somehow, a man had a damage done to it. And somebody got the, gor the gorilla glue and put it back together. And now it is able to function as needed. I understood how to put the pieces back together. Hallelujah. So it can function like it needs to function. There's some of us, amen, that are here, that are online, amen, that have experienced issues in our body, in our health. Uh, 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 it, 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 we've seen scars on our bodies. The scar is still there, but we're still functioning. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Hallelujah. Uh, the, 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 the way that we walk, our gait, the way we talk, it, it, it may not be like it used to be, but we still function. He knows how to put the jars of, of a clay back together. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Understands who we are. We have weaknesses. Hallelujah. But can I tell you one thing? It's all going to be put back together by the power of God. Hallelujah. Why? 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 Because don't, 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 don't the Bible talks about that? Hallelujah. It said, uh, this makes it clear that our great power is from God and not from ourselves. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you. Because in our weakness in 2 Corinthians 12 and 9, in our weakness, his strength is made perfect. Hallelujah. I got to tell somebody about how the Lord delivered me. I got to tell somebody about how the Lord healed me. I got to tell somebody about how the Lord made a way. I got to tell somebody about how God blessed me, how God kept me. Why? Because I was broken. My jaws were broken. My clay got molded. It, it got messed up. But God put it back together again by the power of God. Hallelujah. And what happens here is now we have perseverance. Hallelujah. And our faith has been increased. Because now we continue to hold on. We, 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 we persevered uh, through our tough times. Uh, we persevered knowing uh, that God can help us. We persevered knowing uh, that even though it, it, it's in a bad place right now. But one day God will deliver. Uh, even though it ain't changed like I want it to change. Uh, but one day God will. I'm trusting God. I'm believing God. Uh, I'm holding on to his word. Uh, I'm holding on what that man of God has said. Uh, I'm holding on what that woman of God has said. Uh, I'm holding on to what I I read in the scripture even though a pain is here even though the hurt is here even though the problem is here I want to give up but I'm holding on to what God has said and now I persevered myself my faith is increased and God is doing great things he's doing mighty things hallelujah through my troubles and through my trials and through my tribulation I'm holding on because I realize my now is not my future Hallelujah. Can I encourage somebody today uh, to hold on to God's unchanging hand? Uh, can I encourage somebody today uh, to press on toward the mark uh, of the high call of God in Christ Jesus? Uh, can I encourage somebody to say uh, that though you slay me, uh, yet will I trust him? Uh, can I encourage somebody today uh, that my God shall supply all of my need uh, according to his riches in glory? You might not see it I might not see it but I believe God will make a way I believe God will do it I believe God will supply he'll use whoever he wants to use he'll touch whoever he wants to touch he'll bless whoever he wants to bless he'll move on 
on whoever he wants to move on. Why? Because the excellency of the power, hallelujah, is not of us. It is of God. Hallelujah. Why? Because we have this treasure. You have this treasure. You got something in your earthen vessels. I broke down we are how messed up we are we've got treasure coming from heaven we've got treasure we are special hallelujah we are special to God he's special to us we've got the treasure and you are the treasure hallelujah the gospel of Jesus Christ hallelujah he said it like this we're troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We're persecuted, but not forsaken. We're cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body what the Lord did for us. The dying of the Lord Jesus Christ that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Even though I'm a jar of clay, even though I got problems in my life, even though I got circumstances that seem uh, it will not end, uh, even though uh, I look around and it don't look like it's going to get no better, even though I know God has got a treasure inside of me hallelujah and that treasure hallelujah is made perfect in my weakness hallelujah that treasure is made perfect in my weakness hallelujah this treasure that we have in our earthen vessels somebody give God a praise in this house You've been listening to the Gospel Message with Bishop E.M. Jackson, Senior Pastor of Inner City Tabernacle of Life Ministries. For more information concerning this broadcast, your emails are welcome to ictabernacle at gmail.com. That's ictabernacle at gmail.com. Blessings to you and thanks for joining us. And until next time, remember, let Jesus live it for you.